Today I want to share my thoughts on the AEA HP SS25 caliber. This is not an air gun review. This is more just average guy's thoughts on this particular air gun. I'm not an expert in anything. It's really more just to see what the usability is and you know the fun factor because those are the things that really matter. I'm going to shoot a coconut, drywall, some pine board, and maybe a few other things. bought this guy about six months ago from Peter at AEA Northeast. It's a good gun. I really, really enjoy it. It's small. It's strong. It shoots very well. It's great to have in your backpack when you're going hiking just for plinking or pesting or whatever. It's very comfortable in my hands. I'm really satisfied with it. It has not been without its problems. When I first got it, it wouldn't hold air very long. So I got on the phone with Peter, and it turns out there was um, a little washer problem. Right in here, this little nut just wasn't seated tight enough. So we backed it out, checked the washer to make sure it was cool, put it back in, and it's now holding air just fine. It's so an interesting thing about AEA, I was really not sure if I wanted to buy the gun because there's a lot of red flags around the internet around these guns. People who have them seem to really like them. But, you know, if you Google AEA whatever, you'll find a lot of videos with guys who sell AEA products defending their, their products, saying if you're having a problem with your AEA, you know, whatever gun, well, you're not using it right. It's your fault. It's not the gun's fault. Those are all red flags, in my opinion. If a large portion of the content is simply them defending problems that people have and then blaming the user, that's not a good sign. And I almost didn't buy the gun because of that. But the form factor really appealed to me. And I decided to, you know, take a risk and see if I couldn't maybe luck out and get a good copy. And I didn't luck out and get a good copy, you know, in that sense. It, uh, you know, had a leak. And the other thing is, is that these guys have a little break-in period. So when you first start using it, like when you first put in a clip, if you don't shove the bolt all the way forward, it'll only fire once. So like, you know, sort of a single shot. And then it seemed to work just fine for the most part. It would hang up occasionally, uh, but after a little oil and a little, you know, just a few mags through it, it's chugging along just fine. It goes without a hiccup. I haven't had any jams. And it's a strong little gun. I really like it. People seem to not like this sort of plastic and metal, you know, folding buttstock. I think it's just fine. I don't, I don't mind it. You know, it's adjustable. You can slide the back end in and out. Is it quiet? Meh. It's, you know, got a really short barrel. So, you know, and I, I'm not running a suppressor on it. So it's going to make a pretty loud little plap. Supposedly it's adjustable and it comes from the factory at the strongest setting. I find it hard to believe that many people are going to want to bring it back down from its highest setting. What do I like about this guy? It's short, it's powerful. Now that it's broken in, it seems to be working very well. It's not very heavy, fits in the backpack just fine. And once I got my little sight sort of, you know, sighted in, it hits anything I pretty much pointed out. What don't I like about it? So trigger, it's heavy. Uh, I haven't polished it yet, but it's definitely going to get, you know, a little bit of work. Safe is forward. Fire Arr, is back, which is not what I think a lot of us are used to. Whatever, I've gotten used to it, and it's fine. In an ideal world, they'd go, oh, that's stupid. Americans like to do it the other way around, so we should do it the other way around. But you know what? I can learn to use a backwards safety um, pull the bolt back, and then we get our 
our fiddly little mag out. And this is your stupid backwards, flip it around, put a pellet in backwards, put everything in, oops, plastic mag. Um, it works fine, so cool. But after using my Evanix Max Air, which has the best magazine system of any air gun I've ever used, that's fiddly and stupid, you basically have to, I'm gonna put the gun down here. Um, be hilarious if I shot myself in the leg. Ah, air gun fail! In order to load this bad boy, you have to take your your thing and twist it all the way around. Then you got to flip it over. Then you got to stick a pellet in backwards. Stuff it in skirt first, because why the fuck not? Skirt first, right? So now put your finger over the hole so your pellet doesn't fall out. And then you got to flip it right side. Nose first this time, All right? And then you start feeding your pellets in one at a time. Dip, 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 dip. It's boring, right? Watching people load pellets. Look at that. This is how we do it. So we're all set. Um, does it work? Yeah, it works fine. Here's the thing. <laughs> There's no standard with these things, but they all kind of look the same. My Umarex Gauntlet basically does the same thing, but you don't have to flip it around and put one in backwards. You just have to rotate the plastic cover all the way and then start putting pellets in. Um, it would be really awesome if air gun manufacturers would get together and go, you know, what's the one thing that everyone hates? Stupid plastic magazines that you have to fiddle with and how can we fix it? Well, why don't we call up the guys at Evanix and see what they're doing? Because Nathaniel, who everybody respects, says that they have good magazines. So anyway, I digress. Pull that back and you got to use a little strength because you got to pull that, you know, spring back. Shove that guy in. And then if it's a new air gun, you want to make sure that it's seated. And then you're good to go. The time is 11. strong mags out of it and then it starts to drop off I get as many as four mags if I'm you know plinking in my backyard supposedly it puts out about 30 foot pounds of energy so does it pass the coconut test the coconut test for those of you who haven't figured it out is basically the idea is if the pellet goes through at least the front of the coconut and goes inside the meat of it and you know does its thing, that means that it will probably, keyword probably, go through somebody's skull and into their brain. Just sort of disclaimer, I'm not advocating shooting people with air guns. It's a bad idea. You can kill someone, you can hurt them, you can maim them, you can blind them, don't do it. If you need something for good home defense, get a pit bull. No. Yeah, it's better. Get a German Shepherd. And buy a shotgun. Those are much, much better things for home defense. However, if you're allergic to dogs, <coughs> this could be a good alternative. If I had to use it in a home defense situation, it's better than nothing. Okay, AEA HP SS 25 cal coconut test. So the 25 cal passes the coconut test. You'll see it's got a nice hole in it. 
let's uh, let's finish this coconut up. So, as you can see, we've definitely put holes in the coconut. And you can see right here where one of the pellets went through the coconut and then embedded itself in the other side. It's not a 44 Magnum, but it would probably stop somebody who was running at you in your own house. You would definitely rather have a shotgun or a Doberman Pinscher, but this might do. Is it the ultimate home defense air gun? Would it work? Sure. It passes the coconut test, but barely. The first shot hit the bottom half of the coconut and it hit at the right angle where the pellet actually glanced off the coconut and it went into the stump. The second shot went into the coconut and, you know, started splitting it in half, which is kind of what you want if you want to think that you can use your air gun for self-defense. You put on top. I put a really cheap center point tactical red dot sight on it, which is just fine for my purposes. Um, one thing that's kind of weird about this gun is that it says fill it up to 3600 psi, but you look at the gauge on the front and it's an MPA. What's the guy to do? It's kind of confusing. The other thing is they say you can't use the semi auto feature if it's filled beyond, I believe, 20 MPA which I found to be true at first, but once it got broken in, I've been able to fill it all the way up and it still shoots in semi-auto. So there's some inconsistencies in the way AEA documents these things, um, but it's still an awesome gun. I love the size. I love the power. The trigger's not amazing. I like the stock. I don't see any need to replace it with something more refined. I'm not a huge fan of the Hellet magazine, but it does the job. So, rapid fire, check. You can blast right through a mag, super quick, lots of fun, and um, you can put holes in coconuts. What more could you possibly want from an air gun, except for maybe more power? But this is a fun gun, I highly recommend it if you're in the market for something like this. Just bear in mind that you need to break it in. There's probably going to be a few hiccups because that's kind of what AEA seems to do. But once you get dialed in, I think you're going to be very happy with this gun. It's a lot of fun and it's going to stay in my collection. So, thanks for watching. Have a good one. The time is 1123. Just remember one thing. I'm with James Bitt. Seriously.